Hello comrades and welcome back to Marxist Voice, the podcast of the communist. And welcome back to another episode of our series Towards the Revolutionary Communist Party, where we will go over different aspects of building the party in the run-up to the founding congress of the RCP in the May of this year. Uh, as always, I'm your host, Jack Ty Wilson, and today I'm joined by Fiona Lali, who is a member of the executive committee of the soon-to-be Revolutionary Communist Party, as well as a member of the Political Education Committee as well. Hi Fiona, how's it going? Hi Jack, not bad, thanks. How's your week been so far? I know it's only Wednesday, but uh, yeah, had a good Easter weekend? Yeah, pretty good, only day two, so <laughs> just going through. Have you got up to much over, over the weekend, anything political? Well, I actually went to a Hans Holbein exhibition. Um, Holbein was a painter who, he painted the most famous depiction of Henry VIII standing there kind of proudly, mm. um, as well as, you know, different figures from from the that period and, and, and the monarchy at that time. And it's an interesting ex exhibition because actually the development of his art and the focus on faces um, and individuals as a kind of lifelike image also reflects part of the changes taking place in Britain at that time and, and the development of, of capitalism and the rise of the individual and individualism, mm. which is part of the ideology and, and was part of the ideology of the, the rising bourgeois class, the, the, the merchants that were starting to step forward at that time. And he was a bit of a, a special kind of, it was a very new thing, basically, the art that he was able to produce. Mm. That's, so. that's incredibly interesting. That sounds like a very My cultural weekend. Write a letter for the paper. Yeah, you should definitely write something for the culture pages uh, of the communist. That would be excellent. Yeah. I've actually been very impressed recently with the, the range of different cultural things that our comrades have been reviewing on those uh, pages. We've had music reviews, mm. theatre reviews, even a ballet review, actually, as well. So, yeah, mm, we're good. a cultured bunch here at the International <laughs> Marxist Tendency. What yeah, can you say? There you go. I actually also had a bit of a cultural weekend as well. I went to the William Morris Gallery. Oh, yeah. in, uh, in Walthamstow in, in, in London, which I thought, yeah, was, was, was fantastic. It has obviously a lot of his, uh, his work, uh, you know, design work, the you know, stained glass, the, uh, the tiles, mm -hmm. the tapestries and so on. But, uh, you know, I'm sure many comrades might know this, maybe some of them won't know this, but William Morris actually, after spending almost his entire life, you know, uh, trying to, um, you know, bring art and beauty into the everyday lives of, uh, you know, often, you know, middle class people, I'm sure he would have loved to have uh, stretched that further into the lives of working class people as well. But actually, in his uh, 40s, he turned towards the class struggle. He, he mm. joined um, the Marxist organization at the time, the Social Democratic Federation in the 1870s, I think. And he threw his, he broke from his class background and he threw himself into Marxist organizing, into revolutionary politics. Mm. Yeah, he became a leading member of the, uh, of the SDF and eventually yeah, formed a group called the Socialist League with uh, people like mm. Eleanor Marx and... Um, uh, yeah, and uh, Edward Aveling as well. So yeah, an incredibly interesting uh, guy. Do uh, they say that at the exhibition? Yeah, they say all of this at the oh, exhibition, good. actually. But I also bought a, a volume of his political works as well. So yeah, That's maybe I'll write a, a review or something <laughs> like that in the, in the paper as well. Because he's yeah, very interesting guy in it. Yeah, but anyway, let's move on then to some yes. uh, <laughs> to something more relevant to the topic of, uh, of this podcast. Although mm -hmm. it is nice to get started with a bit of informal chat. Um, so actually, yeah, to start, uh, we heard uh, the following um, uh, voice message from uh, a guy called Luke, who asked a question uh, from the previous episode uh, on finance. He asked a question about um, about membership fees and you know why we, why we charge so much in terms of membership fees. So yeah, we'll just listen to that now and uh, yeah, hear what he has to say. It's Luke again. Um, not got another question. Just wanted to say thanks to Joe and Jack last week for answering my question about finances. Um, um, and yeah, I think I was just thinking about it in the wrong way. In that you're not trying to mass appeal right now and get, uh, you know, the majority of the general public looking for the more serious um, and disciplined, I suppose, determined people that want to do the dirty work or the hard work, I should say, um, at the start of building their own party. Um, I'm actually going to go to my local. Um, not in the meeting this week, this weekend, I think. So it'd be good to learn a bit more and maybe join uh, to uh, help out going forward. Cheers. So yeah, that, that's uh, that's incredible, Luke. Thanks for sending us your uh, your feedback, and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the uh, the Nottingham branch, and uh, yeah, hopefully you uh, you know join us and, and and join the struggle to build the revolutionary communist party. But yeah, just on that topic, if anyone wants to send in their thoughts on this podcast series. Uh, any feedback and especially any questions as well that you'd like us to uh, respond to uh, on this podcast, then please do send them in at uh, communist.red forward slash right and select the category for podcasts. Um, so yeah, 
Fiona, we're launching the RCP and I think, uh, what is it? It's a month now, right? It's less mm -hmm. than five weeks now. Uh, and in this podcast series, we've covered various questions like recruitment, uh, finance, the, the paper and so on. But today we're going to talk about education. How can we educate ourselves as communists, as revolutionaries? So yeah, how does education fit into all of this, would you say? Yeah, well, I hope in the other uh, podcasts that you've done on this, um, the comrades haven't said that these aspects of the work, finance, recruitment, the paper, the foundation of what they do, because what we do, because I'm going to say the exact same thing, <laughs> which is that education is the foundation of, of what we do. And the reason I say that is because if you think about recruiting, um, donating monthly subs, donating to the fighting fund, selling the paper, going out, doing all of this activity, what gives us the conviction to do all of that, to donate, to, to stand on the streets and sell the paper and so on? What gives us the conviction to do those things is, is the understanding of the relationship between that activity and the actual ideas that we are fighting for. Um, it isn't just a desire to go out there and, and, and just talk to random people that makes us sell the paper. It is because we believe and we know that the ideas that we're representing and that we're fighting for are correct. And we have to explain them to other people if we want to build the, the party. We are striving to build a cader party. And what do I mean by that? What is our emphasis on caders? A cader is someone who can go to a different town, go to a workplace, go somewhere else and build a branch of communists. It's someone who can go out there and recruit and train up. It's not, we're not interested in a party of people who just sit around and wait for orders, mm -hmm. um, who just sit around as kind of foot soldiers waiting to be told where to go as the movement develops. We're trying to build people up, build caders, who can who can think for themselves and the only way to do that is, is if you really begin to conquer the ideas of, of Marxism so actually for us education is it's a condition of membership if you want to join the RCP you've got to commit yourself to to studying to self-study and we produce a lot of material in order to equip uh, all of our members and all of our comrades with, with what they need in order to do that this year is obviously the Lenin year um, where we're celebrating, um, but also looking at and studying very closely the, the ideas of Lenin, um, his writings. Uh, we've produced the book, obviously, in defense of Lenin. Um, and, and this Lenin book is really a bit of a, a Bible for us this yeah. year. Um, this year, you know, obviously represents 100 years since, since his death. There's a whole barrage of, of propaganda against Lenin and, and the ideas of communism as a result. And so we're arming our comrades with what they need in order to fight off those attacks, mm -hmm. not just in a defensive manner. Um, we're not just defending Marxism, but we also want to go on the offensive and explain why Marxism ultimately is a, is a superior philosophy, a superior way of understanding and, and explaining the world. Yeah, I've just finished uh, volume one of the Lenin book myself, actually, oh, wow. about to move on to volume two. And I think it's a, it's a real masterclass, really, uh, in how Lenin, you know, conceived of his role in the class struggle, basically. Mm. You know, he didn't uh, uh, ever attempt to dilute the program of Marxism or just sort of brush any problems under the carpet. You know, when he came across a problem, when he came across, you know, a tendency within the workers' movement, which he saw as being, um, yeah, one that would hold the struggle back. He uh, was very conscientious. He, you know, studied philosophy, studied economics mm. uh, to really clarify, you know, what is a scientific uh, scientific program. And he built a party uh, around those ideas. And yeah, I've heard a number of uh, reports actually from the branches about how the Lenin book is really inspiring them to go out and get building the RCP. I uh, read a report from from Preston. We've got a, a burgeoning uh, cell in uh, in Preston. Uh, yeah, where you know the, the communists grew quite a lot uh, in the, in the latter half of uh, last year. But then things, you know, kind of maybe stagnated a bit. Uh, they lost a few members, but yeah, this year they turned a new uh, a new page, so to speak, and they really got stuck into the Lenin book. Every week, you know, they were discussing it, discussing all of the lessons around, you know, Lenin's struggle against the uh, the economists in in in, mm. in, in, uh, in Russia, this kind of opportunist tendency within the workers' movement, and you know, all these different things. You know, how Lenin built the party, his uh, you know focus on revolutionary theory, and through that, it's you know really inspired them to like have you know consistent activity, go out selling the paper, discussing the paper, postering, recruiting people, and so on.
Mm. So you can see right there, it encapsulates, I think, you know, what revolutionary theory can do. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what makes Lenin a particularly outstanding figure was one, his, his grasp of Marxist theory, but then his ability to translate that into what are the needs of the working class mm. in Russia at this time? And how do I read the, the mood of the working class and be able to put forward a program that answers all of those problems? In, in a recent um, issue of the In Defense of Marxism magazine, mm. which is our theoretical magazine, there's an article dedicated to how Lenin studied Hegel and the mm. meticulous note, notes that he used to make and the way he used to try and decipher mm -hmm. <laughs> Hegel's writings, which can be difficult. Um, and it was that really focused dedication to theory, but then being able to apply that to the movement mm -hmm. that made Lenin and ultimately the Bolsheviks successful. And that's why we model ourselves off of the Bolsheviks and, and mm -hmm. off of Lenin himself. Um, we need to be able to use the, the method of Marx to explain the world around us at our upcoming Congress, the, the founding Congress of the RCP, we will be discussing and debating on important documents um, that have been produced. Uh, one of the main documents is a, is a thesis on Britain, which is which is available on online. You can have a, a look at the, the, yeah, the on communist.red, our website. Yeah, yeah, the draft version of that, um, which lays out, you know, our analysis of the conditions in Britain at this time and how that relates to the perspectives for revolution in, mm -hmm. in Britain and explains the processes that are taking place and, and how we as communists therefore should try and orientate towards us. That is the real test of how deeply do you understand Marxist theory is can you use it today to, to explain the world around us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would definitely recommend uh, all of our listeners to go and read that document. It's it's actually incredibly short, I would say. It's only yes. about 3,000 words. Yeah. And it covers so much. It goes uh, across the world situation. It looks at the, uh, you know, the events in, in the United States, for example, kind of laying... You know, because obviously, you know, British capitalism is ultimately like intimately linked to, to world capitalism as well. So it goes over all of that. Yeah. It goes over the, the crisis of British capitalism, the chronic lack of investment in the economy, the financialization, all of these different things, which mm. lead to ultimately a very stagnant, sick and, and, and senile uh, 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 capitalism. And then, yeah, it goes through uh, the, the, the consciousness, the shift in consciousness and so on, the crisis on the political front, the, the, the Tories being riven with splits and divides, the bankruptcy of the Labour leaders and so on. So yeah. yeah, for a very short document, it really hammers home, you know, all of the key essential points. I think that will really, you know, arm our comrades, I think, going into the next year with yeah. the arguments and the sort of, yeah, the, the, the fundamentals of, uh, you know, how, how we can orient towards the working class movement. Yeah. But yeah, is there anything else on the Congress that you'd like to go over before we move on? Um, well, I suppose, you know, we're opening the Congress also by um, looking at how this approach to theory and education and then translating that into analysis of the real world around us is replicated on a, on a world scale mm. through our international. Our international um, just launched uh, a manifesto, um, the, the manifesto of the soon to become Revolutionary Communist International. And so the Congress will, will open with a, with a discussion on that mm. manifesto itself. Yeah, and that's also available online as well, isn't it? Yeah, it on, is. on marxist.com. All of the links to those will be in the show notes uh, of this podcast. Um, so yeah, some might object to all of this talk about about theory and say, you know, what's the point in, in just endlessly discussing these, uh, you know, these minute details, all of this hair splitting and so on? Because ultimately, you know, does history and philosophy really matter that much when really we should just be you know, out there fighting for the for the working class, fighting for wage increases, uh, fighting for things, the concrete, practical things that will improve people's lives. You know, mm -hmm. maybe collecting, uh, you know, uh, for for a food bank or or something like that, doing some sort of mutual aid or something like that. Basically, isn't theory uh, a waste of time? That is quite a common idea, I would say, uh, on on the left. Uh, how would you respond to that? Do you think? Yeah, I think this is a, a common uh, question that comes up a lot, um, and it can come from a very honest perspective mm -hmm. sometimes, people not immediately understanding, well, what is the relevance to this? And I'd say first and foremost, if you look at the history of the communist movement, um, or even just the history of, of the class struggle itself, there have been many different parties and many different organizations that have formed. Um, but the party that stands out above all of them is the Bolsheviks because they were able to take power. And part of the reason that the Bolsheviks sustained themselves as an organization, because 
you know, Russia from the period of, of 1901 all the way up to 1917 went through very tumultuous, um, mm. very tumultuous time. There's a revolution in 1905 that ends in defeat, a period of exile and and, and, and repression, I should say. Um, some of the some of the, the the leading Bolsheviks had to go into exile in that time, including Lenin and so on. But the point is, in tumultuous periods, mm. it's very hard to sustain yourself as an organization. And the reason the Bolsheviks were able to do so and claw themselves back is because um, they had ideological clarity or, or Lenin in particular tried to insist upon a clear ideological basis to the party and what it represented. Because look, as, as communists, we don't exist in a vacuum. Actually, we live in and around, um, or we live in capitalism, right? So the pressures of bourgeois mm. society and bourgeois ideas and bourgeois philosophy are constantly on us and constantly trying to penetrate mm. the, the, the organization. So we have to build, first of all, a sharp wall to, mm. to, to clearly demarcate what is Marxist mm. philosophy and what is bourgeois philosophy, the philosophy of postmodernism, the philosophy of, of, of individualism, identity and politics, identity politics one, yeah. um, which are very, very present and, and also present on the left in, 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 in a conscious and a slightly unconscious way. And so we think the way to... To one, build an organization, but then also to sustain it is to have um, a clear ideological approach. It's like when you're when you're rowing in a boat and someone's moving the oar one way, and I yeah. don't know if it's an oar, and someone's moving <laughs> the oar the other way, you're not going to go forward, you're going to spin around in circles. Yeah. And that's what happens to organizations who in, you know, kind of fetishize eclecticism mm -hmm. as though um, this mishmash of yeah. different ideas is somehow going to produce something greater than itself. Of course, discussion, debate, clarification, polemics are absolutely necessary. And there's a long history of that in the Bolsheviks, but there's a limit to how that takes place and you need a foundation. And our foundation is very simple. We base ourselves first and foremost on the ideas of Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky, the key theoreticians of, of, the, of the communist movement. Um, and, and we really encourage our own comrades to read those authors and, and those, those communists themselves. You know, we use this phrase sometimes, don't read about Marx, read Marx. <laughs> um, uh, don't read what the universities have to say about him or, or any of these figures. Just go to the source itself mm -hmm. um, and then use what you, you, you study to, to try and understand the, mm -hmm. the world around you. But some might object and many do object Hasn't society changed quite a lot since the days of, uh, of Marx or even, you know, Trotsky? You know, Trotsky died in, in 1940 and there's been, what, eight decades that have uh, elapsed since since that time. So shouldn't we study someone more time. modern, you know, maybe, uh, I don't know, Slavoj Žižek or uh. something like that? You know? <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, read Aaron Bastani or something you know, oh, for the ultimate luxury communism. What, did you, what would you say about that? You know, do we need modern ideas to make sense of a modern world? I think in response to that, I would say that what we need above all is the right ideas um, rather than endlessly searching for, for new ideas. This is actually a, a real feature, I would say, of, of the worst aspects of academia mm. is, the, is the, the search to be new, to reinvent things, to reinvent the wheel. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to echo um, uh, what, how Alan Woods tends to answer this question, which is that the wheel is a very old <laughs> idea, a very old invention, but it works rather well and, and we continue to use it. Look, what we have to ask ourselves is... Are the ideas of Marxism relevant to the world around us? Is what Marx wrote about in the Communist Manifesto 170 years ago, something like that, um, <laughs> how does that explain the world around us in terms of the division of society into two great classes, the ruling class and, and the working class, the concentration of capital to an extreme end and, and wealth on one pole and complete degradation and misery on the other end. All of the contradictions um, that, that Marx explained 170 years ago were relevant then and are even more relevant now. This is something mm. that the, the manifesto of the RCI explains ex extremely well. And so that is the most important, important question. Um, there are very few books uh, or texts from 170 years ago that can explain the world around us today. Um, and, and Marxism, the other point about Marxism is it, it's, not a, it's not a dogma, right? Mm -hmm. When we talk about studying these texts or, or studying these, um, uh, these uh, theoreticians, 
we aren't interested in acad in just narrow interest or, or academic study, right? And we're not hero worshippers. We study as revolutionaries who actually have work to do. We know that we need to overthrow the capitalist system and we are striving to build socialism. Marxist texts are our theoretical guide to this practical activity. Of course, then, as I said earlier, it has to be translated into um, what, what is uh, happening today. AI, for example, um, how do we understand the, the role of AI? AI. Um, I think there's probably even a podcast. Oh, there's there is actually. There's just yeah. been a podcast on that on the Spectre of Communism podcast. Yeah, our competitor, uh, yeah. uh, I, I was going to say our, our comrades, sister, yeah. our, our sister podcast. Yeah, two kinds of people. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, obviously we we've got to we've got to use the ideas of, of Marxism to to explain the world around us. But a lot of what these modern philosophers, modern um, academics, modern whatever you want to call them, people do, is not actually apply Marxism, but try and reinvent a new theory, which mm. often um, ends up a mishmash of bourgeois philosophy mm. and, and 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 bourgeois ideas um, to try and you know, satisfy an, an appetite of, of just kind mm. of narrow academic, uh, I don't know yeah. what you want to call it. There's a phrase that there's nothing new under the sun. And I think that yeah. is definitely true with all of these people who try and reinvent the wheel. In fact, I'm reading a text by Lenin at the moment uh, called Materialism and Imperial Criticism, mm -hmm. where he's responding to uh, some figures within the Bolshevik party, actually, who were trying to invent a new philosophy. They were trying to you know, revise Marxism, revise dialectical materialism, essentially, yeah. putting forward this idea that there's nothing that exists apart from sensation and experience. Mm -hmm. And we can't really truly know the world, basically. There's no objective uh, reality. Very similar to the postmodernists of today. And Lenin spends basically the first chapter of that just saying, you think that you're inventing something new, but you're actually just resorting to the ideas of uh, people who lived hundreds of years ago, people like Bishop yep. Barclay, yep. you know, a Catholic bishop who, uh, you know, wanted to try and disprove materialism from a reactionary point of view. So, yeah, I think that's definitely true. You know, everyone who, you know, raves and rants about new ideas, they're not really putting forward anything new most of the time. And if they are putting forward something new, then, you know, it's not very useful. Yes. <laughs> uh, you we know, could say really... this, this debate has been had for a hundred years yeah. in the communist movement. And mm -hmm. every single time the people insisting on new ideas mm -hmm. have ended up as revisionists and ended up as people who have abandoned Marxism, actually, um, mm -hmm. and fallen into some kind of, of reformism mm -hmm. um, because they end up just... When they say we need to update Marxism, they they essentially find themselves in the situation where they're just justifying the existing capitalist system in mm. some way um, and trying to adapt it in order to not really get to the root of the problem. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, often wary of people who talk about <laughs> newness. Yeah, um, yeah, precisely. Okay. Actually, this brings to mind the question that we've received uh, from a, a listener to the podcast uh, called um, called Louis. Because, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, we stand for a set of ideas, Marxist ideas, and we're very serious about studying and upholding these ideas. But of course, you know, we aren't um, the only group on the left. I'm sure there, you know, there are many other groups that call themselves socialist uh, and communist that also claim to stand for, for, for a Marxist program uh, and so on. So I want to ask you, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, yeah, Louis asks, what makes us different from these other parties and groups? Can we talk about, you know, why the RCP uh, is different and why people should join us instead of, you know, these other groups that claim to be Marxist? Look, we are deadly serious about what it is that we're trying to do. We intend to change this world. Um, Lenin famously said, and, we, and we've used this a lot in the past, but it's worth repeating, that without revolutionary theory, there can be no revolutionary movement. And that is precisely what our organization offers in comparison to all of the other groups or, or, or whatever on, on the left. An absolute insistence on, on ideological clarity, on dialectical materialism as a way to understand the world around us, the philosophy of Marxism, um, and, and trying to imbue all of that in every single person who joins our organization. I don't believe there's anyone else um, who can provide that. Um, we come from a, a long line of, of important um, uh, of, of real class fighters and, and Marxists and communists. I mean, we, we can trace our organization all the way through to the Fourth International. Um, and that's because we've had this serious approach and the serious approach to building an organization and wanting to overthrow capitalism can only come from an absolute conviction in the idea that it is possible and the ideas that we need to, to do so. 
and and I would say that is the the most fundamental difference between between us and and, and other groups on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and as you said, we have this very serious approach uh, to to education. Um, so yeah, I guess we should probably uh, conclude things really by by uh, discussing you know how can listeners at home. You know whether they're someone who hasn't even joined yet, uh, who's who's soon to join, or even if you know they're a secretary of a branch or, or something like that, or a leading comrade. What can they do really to hit the ground running with their communist education uh, in the run up to the congress? What kind of resources? What kind of support can we provide in order to kickstart their communist education? Basically, yeah. The best thing about joining an organization and, and joining our organization is you're joining something bigger than yourself that has a lot of history and has had many comrades who over many, many years have studied the ideas of Marxism. Um, and through that process, we have been able to create an immense um, archive, but also um, kind of... How should I describe it? Uh, treasure trove is, is, a, is a phrase we like to use um, of, of material, right? In order to aid people in their journey, in their self-study for Marxism. So on our website, we have many, many reading guides to accompany you when you're reading some of these texts um, with helpful questions, helpful prompts. We also have a whole section to our website that's dedicated to theory going through the classics, philosophy, um, history, historical materialism, Marxist economics, but also huge important concepts like the state. Mm. Um, how do we as, as communists relate to the state? How do we want to smash it? Other ideas on the left like anarchism, um, but also looking at things that people, that maybe motivate people in their journey towards coming to Marxism, like the fight against oppression and so on mm. and so forth. So we have curated on, on, on our website and also just generally through the organization, important kind of bite-sized um, sectionings of, mm. of how to approach different um, elements of society using Marxist theory. And, and I would say part of the benefits of, of a full-time apparatus is that time can be and has been spent curating this material. But also with all of that material, and there's a lot out there and it can be overwhelming, I would say the most important thing is that anything you pick up to read, any podcast that you listen to, any video that you watch, is that you must discuss um, mm. those ideas that you come into contact with, with somebody else, with another comrade. And then actually the best way to learn is to, to teach, is to teach others. Um, you don't have to be the most well-rounded expert in all elements of, of Marxism and, and Marxist theory in order to go out there. Uh, the best thing to do is, is to get a bit of a grip of the ideas and then go out and try and teach them to other people because it's in that process that you'll clarify it for yourself and also that you'll build the party, right? It's really important to emphasize this point that we aren't interested in people who want to recite pages and pages of Marxist literature, but cannot or will not translate that into the reality of people's lives and go out and, and talk to people. That is the real test of how how well have you understood Marxism and how well have you have you grasped this theory. So, you know, grab those those books, grab a subscription to the IDOM, check out the website, check out all of the videos, and then find another mm. comrade who you can you know, discuss all of that out with and, 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 and go to that comrade with questions and, and, and they, they will hopefully have the mm -hmm. answer to them. And if that person doesn't, there's probably another person in the organization who does. That's the benefit of, of being a part of an organization as, as, as big as ours um, with the history that it has mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, I just really want to underscore just how much educational material that we produce here at the RCP. I mean, it actually is, I think, quite overwhelming sometimes to just see the complete, like the, the vastness of what we produce. I mean, you mentioned the education hub. I think there are about... 16 different sections on the Education Hub, which comprise short articles, longer articles, reading guides, podcasts, videos, book recommendations, uh, and so on. We've got the In Defense of Marxism magazine, which comes out uh, quarterly, every every three months. That's an international bulletin, basically, of communist education with articles that are curated and, and, and developed over a long period of time uh, by our international um, leadership. Uh, the, the latest issue was on Lenin, but we've had previous issues on questions like historical materialism, uh, women's oppression, uh, the, the Enlightenment, for example. Mm. I think the next issue is going to be very interesting on the topic of, of Africa. It's going to have articles, yes. um, I think, you know, covering uh, Lenin's theses on the colonial question, uh, Franz Fanon and an evaluation of, uh, of his uh, life uh, and, and ideas. 
as well as yeah like various uh, you know sort of uh, struggles that have taken place on the African continent including like Ethiopia mm -hmm. uh, in the 70s and so on you know re really in-depth uh, uh, ideas that sometimes are on things that are you know quite uh, quite you know quite general and quite applicable to uh, our everyday work often you know but other times as well can often be on topics that are slightly um, you know less talked about and can actually really arm our comrades on things that people generally don't know much about I would say so yeah that's a really yeah. very valuable resource uh, our paper, every issue has yeah. uh, center pages covering, uh, you know, various different things, whether it's current events and current, you know, sort of um, issues like the role of the United Nations, for example, or, you know, going back into history and looking at the role that Lenin played during the February Revolution. These mm -hmm. are all things that we've covered recently uh, in the center pages um, of uh, the communist. We also have a bookshop as well, which produces yes. pamphlets, uh, books, um, Everything, you know, starting from the classics of Marxism, which is one of our most popular um, uh, purchases, which, you know, goes through things like the Communist Manifesto, Lenin's State and Revolution, uh, Trotsky's Transitional Program, you know, different uh, you know, basic texts around economics, you know, strategy and so on. Uh, books like What is Marxism as well, which I would say are to this day, you know, one of the best introductions to Marxist theory. But yeah, really, you know, anything under the sun that you can imagine, we will probably have a book on that on uh, wellreadbooks.co.uk. So definitely, um, yeah, check that out. But yeah, I would say theory really... Um, saturates every aspect of our yes. organization you know every week for example our branches and cells we don't just go straight into you know organizational administrative things like oh you know when can everyone make a paper sale when can everyone do postering and so on yeah. uh, filling out spreadsheets about paper sales and stuff like that you know having meticulous organization obviously is very important but every single branch meeting always starts with a theoretical political discussion Last night, my branch discussed the lessons of the Paris Commune. Um, what did your branch discuss this week? We discussed the state, actually. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that's very good. Yeah. And then, you know, after that, we'll discuss current events. We'll discuss events in the news from a Marxist perspective. So everything is geared towards, you know, raising our political level, having, having a better understanding of the world. And that really is the, 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 um, yeah, the, the, the bedrock of all that we do. Can uh, I just add something yeah, to of course that? You can. Which is, yeah. I really want to make this point that the, the world right now is in a huge, it's in a deep crisis, right? We make this point, capitalism is in its its deepest ever crisis and that's expressing itself economically, um, politically, but also socially. And I think so many people feel this overwhelming sense of dread and doom um, at the deep convulsions that are happening. For us as Marxists, theory really is the, the, the kind of the anchor mm -hmm. to our position in the world and how we understand what is what is taking place. If you were trying to make sense of the seeming barbarism, um, violence, just the complete, you know, senseless what what feels like evilness yeah. that is that is coming over the world is is place that in its in a certain historical context which is the deep crisis that capitalism is in and what that is producing um which is a lot of inequality and war and oppression we can make sense of that because of our study of Marxist theory and also our study of history and and so I would really encourage people to you know find refuge in Marxist theory yeah. as, a, as a way to make sense of the world around them because without it the world is a, a scary place and then a confusing yeah. place um, and there is a huge sense of dread but actually a study of, of theory and then the class struggle itself gives us optimism because it, it, it it's explaining to us what do we need to do right what do we need to do in order to end the horror the barbarism um, the violence and, and the chaos of the of the capitalist system Theory is our guide to action, and that is the the most important role that it plays in our organisation. Yeah, well, I think that's a good uh, yeah a good note to end on. I would say, um, but just before we we uh, yeah end the podcast, I'd like to go over a few quick uh, quick announcements. Um, so yeah, if you've been listening to this podcast series as well as our other uh, podcast episodes, and you agree with what you have to say, and you're inspired by uh, yeah our campaign to found the Revolutionary Communist Party, then yeah we need your help to do this. Uh, it's not enough to just listen uh, listen to us or, or follow us on social media. You need to roll your sleeves up and get involved in building the party. So wherever you are, whether you're in Britain or anywhere across the world, get involved in the Revolutionary Communist Party and get involved 
uh, in the Revolutionary Communist International uh, as well. If you sign up uh, on our website, the link will be in the show notes of this podcast. We will get in touch with you immediately and provide you with the support and the resources that you need uh, to set up a cell or a branch wherever you are in your workplace, your university, your school, uh, any, anywhere uh, at all. And we will yeah, guide you uh, along the way to building yeah, a bona fide branch of the RCP. Uh, we're aiming to have uh, 2,000 members by the end of this year in time for a, a crisis-ridden Starmer government and all of the radicalization and struggle that that will bring with it. Um, and yeah, the whole situation hinges upon whether we can build uh, you know, a communist leadership in time for these class struggles. So yeah, join us. And if you're maybe you know, uh, not ready to join us quite yet, and there's still other ways that you could support us, take out a subscription to our newspaper, The Communist, as well as our magazine, In Defense of Marxism. And you can also donate to us as well. We would highly appreciate a regular donation uh, towards us on a monthly basis, or you can donate to our special party launch fund. We're trying to raise 20,000 pounds in time for the founding Congress of the RCP in a month's time. Yeah, uh, so yeah, definitely check out um, yeah, our website where you can find links to subscribe and, and donate to us. But yeah, with all of that said, thanks very much to our listeners for tuning into the podcast. Make sure you send in your questions, your reports, and your feedback to us uh, at communist.red forward slash write, and we might include it on the next episode of the podcast. And uh, yeah, make sure you stay subscribed to the podcast for future episodes covering revolutionary theory, uh, revolutionary history, current events, and party building, brought to you by The Communist.